I was very green to, to live streaming when I started and I was nervous and I was talking really, really quickly and I'd probably get through my content really, really quickly. And the thing that I, I, the, I didn't really understand at the time was that I would say the last thing I wanted to share with you and I would hit the stop streaming button immediately. And oh, yeah. what actually happens when I did that, especially with my older internet that was a bit slower at the time, yeah. was it would cut me off mid-sentence. So I do kind of encourage you to have sort of opening and closing sequences, whether that's a video, whether that's a static image. It's also good to have, you know, 15, 20 seconds or something at the end of your live stream for the, the YouTube end cards as well. Yeah. If you want to, you know, send somebody off to another piece of your content. I spent a solid week preparing for a live stream and I had slides and I had software demonstrations and I had all my scenes set up in OBS. Everything was ready to go. I was so well rehearsed. I did the whole stream. Nobody was there in, uh, as far as I know, no one joined me live. I got to the ends. I sort of looked at the recording on YouTube and discovered that my audio had been muted the entire time. <laughs> And like, I was just ready to throw myself in front of a bus at that point in time. It was just so depressing. And to be honest with my, my temperament, I could have just, that could have just ruined my entire month, but I don't know what it was, but in that moment, I sort of went like, you, you're being stupid, like just schedule it for half an hour from now. We'll do yeah. the whole thing again. It'll be fine. And it actually was better. And I actually had people join me for the second time. So again, live happens and, yep. you know, things will go wrong. And it's not really a question of whether they'll go wrong. They definitely will. It's kind of like, how are you going to react to them when they do? But the thing about being in front of a green screen is that you have to kind of be mindful of the outfits that you're wearing and, and the clothes that you're wearing, because... If it's a little bit too much like the green screen, uh, that's going to be a problem. And I sort of learned this the hard way a, a week or so ago. I had this bright fluoro yellow t-shirt on and I wore it and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think twice about it. And I just looked like this, like I was just a floating head. So unless you're actually, you know, doing it for comedic purposes or I don't know, Halloween's coming up. Headless uh, horseman might be ideal, but yeah, especially if you are working with a blue, blue screen or a green screen, just be mindful of that wardrobe and, and maybe, you know, create a list of things not to wear on, on camera. <laughs> yeah.